Hi everyone, welcome to Go Classes. So in this lecture, we will see some examples of functional completeness in digital logic. Okay, so you can watch the last lecture. In the last lecture, I I discussed the definition of functional completeness. What is the idea of functional completeness in different different fields? Okay, what is functional completeness in digital circuits? What is functional completeness in Boolean algebra, propositional logic, set theory? Okay, so all these things, uh, all these concepts we have already seen in the last lecture. Okay, so you can find the link of last lecture in the description. You can find it. Okay, so first you watch it and then you can watch this video. Okay, so let's see. So in in boolean algebra what so which set of operations are enough which set of operations is enough to express any boolean function so we can say this is our first example that addition multiplication complement so basically this means uh, your and or and uh, complement this is a functional complete set okay so this is what i want to say that in boolean algebra i can say okay in boolean algebra we can say that in boolean algebra we can say this set okay this set and or not so in boolean algebra this set is functional complete this one this set is functional complete what it means it means that using only these operations okay so if you have an and operation or operation not operation using only these operations you can implement you can write expression of any boolean function so if i give you any boolean function that boolean function you can very easily write okay the expression of that boolean function you can very easily write using only these operations you don't need any uh, any remaining operations for example you don't need uh, xor xnor nand nor you don't need those operations if you have these operations if you use these operations then you can write any boolean or any boolean function okay so for example if you have two variables let us assume we have two variables a comma b and i give you let us assume this is our function okay so let me give you a function for example let's assume this is our function you can notice this is your xor function we can notice this is xor function means i can say that this is a xor b but i am saying that you don't need this xor what i can say using and or not using only these operations okay using these operations we can express this function so this function we can very easily express this function i can write using only these operations so what i can do very simple so this operation i can say that this function this function is one in these two combinations for these two combinations this function is one so you can notice that for this combination for this combination function is one in this combination you can notice a is zero b is one or or i can say a is one b is zero so you can notice that this function this xor function i can express i don't need this xor operation this operation i don't need i can express this function i can express this operation using okay you can you can notice using and comma or comma not so you can notice here we have used or so this is our or okay this is our not and this is our and you can notice okay this is our and so using these operations okay using and not or these are enough these are sufficient to express any boolean function so how can we prove it how can we prove that any boolean function can be expressed using these three operations you don't need any other operation how can we prove it so the proof is very simple because we already know that if you have any boolean function okay so if you have any boolean function then for any boolean function we have a we can we can we can represent this boolean function using a truth table correct so we already know that any boolean function you have for example if you have a function on three variables a comma b comma c so if you have this function then this function i can express using truth table okay so you can notice for this function because this is a function on three variables so there is a truth table in this truth table there will be total eight combinations so there will be total eight rows in the truth table and this function i can very easily represent basically in this truth table i can say that for each combination what is the value of the function for each combination what is the value of the function like this okay so any boolean function i can represent using truth table and now from truth table i can write the expression of a function once i have this truth table then what i can do then i can write the expression for this function so i can write the expression i can write the expression of f i can write the expression of f in terms of in terms of and comma or comma no okay so only these operations i need so i can from this truth table what i can do i can write the expression of function f in terms of and or not only these operations how can we do it 
so we already know that if you have any function then that function that function is basically that function can be written as summation of those min terms summation of those min terms where function is one okay similarly i can say that this function i can express as product of those max terms where function is zero okay so these concepts we already know this is called min term expansion this is called max term expansion so you can notice that any function that you have that function you can represent as summation of min terms or you can express as product of max terms okay so this is the idea so the idea is like this what i can say i can say that if you have any function so this function f this function i can represent as summation of this function any function whatever boolean function you have any boolean function you have that can be represented that can be expressed as summation of those min terms i can say summation of those min terms okay for which function value is one for which function value function f function value f is equal to one okay so you can notice this is the idea so i can say that any function you have that can be represented as summation of those min terms summation of those min terms where function value is one okay so that is your expression of any function and you can notice that what is a min term min term is basically a product term min term what is min term min term is simply a product term in which all the variables are present so for example if you have any function if you have a function on three variables then for this function total eight min terms we have for example this is a min term for example this is a min term for example this is a min term okay for example this is a min term and so on so total eight min terms we have you can notice every min term is a product term so in every min term what we are using in every min term either we are using and or and comma not operation so you can notice in this min term not comma and operation are used in this min term uh, and operation is used so you can notice in this min term whatever min term you have whatever min term you have in this min term you are you only use either you use okay so and comma not okay so only these two operations we use in any min term okay now every min term can be represented using and comma not and finally every function can be represented as summation of min terms any function any function can be represented as summation of min terms okay summation of min terms so i can say summation means or so summation means or so you can notice every function can be expressed whatever function you have that function can be expressed using or comma nand comma not because this min term this min term can be written i can write min term using and comma not okay so you can notice every function can be expressed using or comma and comma not so this is the idea so this is the proof that every function can be written can be expressed using only these operations i only need these operations to express any function so this set is functionally complete okay so this is the simple idea and similarly you can notice that every function can be written as product of max terms product of max terms where function is zero so i can say product of max term those max terms where function value is zero where function value is zero okay so product of those max terms will be our function so i can say our function is product of those max terms okay where function value is zero and a max term you already know what is a max term so max term is just a summation term this is just a sum term in which all the variables are present sum term okay consisting of all the variables i can say okay so sum term consisting of all variables consisting of all variables okay so for example you can notice if you have a function on three variables so let us assume we have a function on three variables then you can notice this is a max term this is a max term you can notice this is a max term so you can notice that these are the max term max term is a sum term this is a sum term which consists of all the variables so you can notice this is a sum term in which all the variables are there either in the original form or in the complemented form here b is in the original form here a is in the complementary form okay so the point is very simple that every max term is a summation term consisting of all variables and the variable uh, these variables they can appear either in original form or they can appear in the complement form 
okay so the idea is very simple that max term i can simply say that the max term basically the max term is created using or comma not okay so if you want to write any max term then every max term is basically the combination of or comma not only these two operations we need to write any max term okay and finally every function can be represented as every function can be represented as product of max terms so product means and i can say product means and and max term can be written as combination of or comma not so finally i can say that every function can be represented can be expressed using these three operations and comma or comma not so these three operations are enough to express any function any boolean function we can express using only these using only these expressions okay so uh, so this is the idea let's take one example okay so for example consider this function let me take this function okay so let's take this function this is a function on three variables you can notice okay so this a b c these are the three variables and this is our function you can notice this function has value zero for these three combinations and this function has value one for the remaining combinations so these are the min terms where function value is one and these are the min terms where function value is zero and i can say that this function i can express as summation of those min terms where function value is one summation of those min terms where function value is one so what are those min terms where function value is one so you can notice that those min terms where function value is one this is zero one two three four five six seven so these are the min terms where function value is one so i can say three four five six seven three four five six seven these are the min terms where function value is one so i can say that this function can be represented i can represent this function this function i can represent as a summation as a summation of these min terms okay so what is this min term you can notice this min term uh, 0 1 1 what is this min term this min term is basically i can say a bar b c okay so this is the min term a bar b c or what is this min term so this is your 3 what is 4 4 is 1 0 0 so it means a b bar c bar similarly 5 5 is 1 0 1 so that is simply a b bar c or what is 6 6 is 1 1 0 so that means a b c bar and similarly 7 7 is 1 1 1 and it means a b c so you can notice that this function i can represent this function we have and this function i can represent using only these three operations okay or comma and comma no okay so only three operations i am using or and no so i can express this function using only these three operations similarly i can say that this function i can express as product of max terms where function value is zero okay so you can notice that product of max terms product of max terms where function value is zero where function value is zero so the function value is zero for these max terms for these max terms function value is zero zero comma one comma two okay so i can say what is this max term for example zero zero means zero 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 so what is this max term this max term is a or b or c product of max terms so what is this max term this this max term is a or b or c bar and what is this max term zero one zero this max term zero one zero what is that that is a or b bar or c again you can notice that the function f can be represented as okay product of max term where function value is zero and i can say this function f i can represent using and comma or comma not so only these three operations we need the this is the final conclusion that any boolean function if you have if you have any boolean function whatever boolean function you have okay any boolean function i can express okay can be expressed i can say okay can be expressed okay can be written okay you okay using only these operations and comma not comma or okay so only these three operations we need no, we don't need any other operation we don't need nor nand xor xnor we don't need any other operation so any boolean function that you have we can express using these operations okay so that is the point and so that's why we can say that this set so we can say okay this is set of operations so i can say this set of boolean operations is functionally complete 
so this op this set of operations is functionally complete because every boolean expression can be expressed using only these operations we don't need any other operation these are sufficient these are enough to express any boolean function okay so this is the proof and now <clears throat> in the next example okay in the next video we will see some more functionally complete set okay thank you